Okay, so welcome back. Today we are going to talk about what I call range mapping. Now, what is range mapping and why do we care? Well, in a previous video, we looked at developing some very simple equations, only two equations, to help us simulate these uh, what are called projectiles. Basically, you're shooting some objects out of a cannon and they're flying across the air and then they're falling to ground based on gravity. And we saw there's only two equations you need, very simple equations, to give you the x and y coordinates of each object at every point in time. So um, we simulated this and came up with the x and y coordinates in feet for every object over time. However, that doesn't allow us to put these simulated cubes flying through the air on the screen. Somehow we have to tell the computer where to put the cubes on the screen. So we calculated the positions in the real world in feet, x and y coordinates in feet, but if you tell the computer, hey, put it at this feet and this feet, it has no clue what you're talking about. The only thing the computer knows is pixels. You know, we've got an area here of so many pixels and the computer wants to know, okay, Tell me for each pixel what color to paint the pixel. That's all the computer knows. It knows nothing about feet. So somehow we have to convert from the real world X and Y coordinate and feet to this window pixel coordinates. All right. So range mapping is mapping from the X and Y feet range of values to the computer pixel range of values in this window. So it's just converting from feet into pixels really. So how are we going to do that? Well, we need to know, for example, let's say this window represents a thousand pixels across and maybe 800 pixels down. We need to tell the computer, well, that thousand pixels corresponds to, in the real world of feet, maybe it corresponds to 200 feet. And maybe this Y coordinate, uh, the 800 pixels corresponds to maybe 100 feet or whatever the answer is. So we need to take the total range of X and Y feet values and map that to the total range of pixel values. So let's look here at a simpler example. Let's say I have some values between zero to one and I want to map them to a range from zero to five. So all we're saying is we want to take those values and apply them proportionally to this zero to five range. So let's say I've got one, two, three, four values in this input range, and I want to see what the equivalent is in a wider range. So I can basically feed them in and say, well, if I had a value of one on the input, that maps to five on the output, and 0.5 on the input maps to like half of that, or two and a half, since it's half here. So it's like two and a half here, and so on. So you're just taking a proportional value of the input range and mapping that to the outputs range. Pretty simple. Um, and that's basically what we're gonna be doing. So here we've got uh, a 0.5 maps to a 2.5, a one maps to a five, and a zero maps to a zero. Now, in our case, it's gonna be a little bit more challenging because we're going, say we're mapping from zero to 100 feet, and we wanna map that to pixels that go from zero on the top left to 600 on the bottom right. Okay, so it's a little bit different, but it's kind of similar, right? It's the same concept. In the, in the real world, we've got zero is at ground level. Um, and in the pixel range, zero is the top left upper level. So you do have to be wary of this. You have to be mindful of this. But otherwise, it's basically just taking proportional mapping of the input value to the output range. So now if you look at this, um, let's say we want to take this 0.5 input value and map it to the output. And just by inspection, you can probably come up with the answer, right? Um, this 0.5 is halfway between the 0 and the 1, and the output is from 0 to 5. So to map this proportionally to the output, you'd say, well, what's half of 5? That's going to be 2.5. So right away, you can come up with kind of an equation to say, you know, you're going to have to have a proportionality factor. In this case, we could say, you know, the total output range is five versus the input range is one, one minus zero and five minus zero. 
So the output is five times the input. So with this simple example, you can say if the input is 0.5, five times that is two and a half. So you can see the equation is going to be fairly straightforward um, to just map the input proportionally to the output. Now we do have to be mindful of the fact that, you know, these inputs and outputs don't have to necessarily be, you know, from zero to one or zero to five, you might have a negative value, right? So it can be all over the place. So we are going to have to add something to it. But the basic concept is, is you're going to find, you know, what's the output range and what is that proportional to the input range? And then you can pretty much map the input to the output like we just did. So let's take a real world example. And uh, what I've put here is the actual equation we're going to use to map an input range to an output range. And you can see in the beginning here, it's using that um, proportionality factor we just talked about. You take the difference between the maximum and the minimum of the output range. In this case, it's 600 pixels. You divide that by the maximum minus the input of the input range, which is 100. And then you multiply it times the input minus the input minimum. And the input is, in this case, we want to solve for 50 feet. Where would that be in our pixel range? So um, you take the input minus the minimum of the input and add that to the minimum of the output, and that should give you the answer. So if we look at this, we know, well, it goes from 0 to 100. We want to map 50. And this goes from 0 to 600. So we should get, by inspection, should be like 300, right? So let's fill this out and see what we get. So out max is 600. Out minimum is 0. So it's 600 on the numerator. In maximum is 100 minus in minimum is 0. So it's by divide by 100 times the input minus the input minimum. So the input is 50 minus 0 is 50 plus the output minimum, which is 0. So if you go through and calculate that, it's 600 over 100 which is 6 times 50 plus 0, which is 6 times 50 is 300. So you can see we got the correct mapping answer. And here is the equation we used. And this should work um, even if you have negative values. And this is the equation we're going to use to map our real world feet calculations into pixels. So if you saw the previous video where we simulated um, the flying projectiles, uh, we calculated the X and Y location of each projectile at each time step. And we took those feet values and mapped them to the pixel values. And we used uh, this map ranges method that we'll talk about in a bit. And basically, the map ranges, all it does, you take a uh, feet value, in this case, the X location in feet, and you're giving it the input minimum, the input maximum, the output minimum, and the output maximum. And we're going to map it to those pixel coordinates. So in this case, we're saying the X location range is going to go from 0 to 200. And we want to map that to a pixel range of 0 to 600. And then for the Y values, the feet range in Y is going to go from 300 to minus 450 because we started our projectiles at the middle of the screen. So as it goes below that, it's going to go negative. So we're giving a total range of Y values, maximum of 300 and minimum of minus 450. And we're mapping that to a range of Y values from 0 to 600 pixels. That just goes through and calls this method called map ranges. We feed it the value that we want to map, the input minimum, input maximum, output minimum, output maximum, and it just returns that equation we just talked about. So really straightforward. Um, you just feed it the input range and the output range, and it converts your input value to an output value uh, proportional. So that's about it for this. Uh, if you like any of these videos, I encourage you to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications, and most of all, Please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.